But I want to uh, welcome uh, our audience of listeners and viewers. I'm Mary Sabatino from Gallery Le Long, and I'm here with Leonardo Drew as part of our Conversations with Artists, uh, a series we've done at Gallery Le Long since the pandemic. Uh, this is actually the first time that we're here in an artist studio, and Leo and I are more than six feet apart. <laughs> we just took off our way map, over there. <laughs> way over here, um, which is really for me amazing to be in an artist studio and surrounded by creativity um and leo especially leo's unbridled creativity that's something i stole from dd young who that's how she described leo to me the first time she met him um leo um thank you you've been very generous uh, for of course i imagine looking at the names of listeners many of them know who you are Leo is a sculptor who uh, grew up um, outside of New York in Bridgeport, Connecticut, started showing at a very early age, at 12 or 13, uh, was, um, what shall I say, recruited by Marvel Comics and others, but turned his back on that in order to become a, a working artist. Leo, though, you started showing very early, in yeah. the early 90s mm -hmm. at the Studio Museum. I remember your show at Red Waxing Space. And even before that, I, I can kill the gallery. I can really, kill the gallery, really right. First. Um, and, for, and we're talking the first of a certain body of work, because before that, I was exhibiting, you know, uh, something else. And at know? that time, yeah. you lived in a very small studio apartment and a neighbor could easily transport. Mm -hmm. um, Leo's had a very long career, um, many important museum placements and uh, exhibitions, but we're going to talk today about the most recent exhibitions and the upcoming ones. So right now you have uh, two exhibitions that opened and you know, this is also great because many artists have had their exhibitions canceled because of the pandemic. Uh, can we look just quickly, Grace, at the North Carolina Museum of Art? Uh, this is Leo's current exhibition, which, which we can look now. There's going to be a very quick exhibition tour. Oh, that's the hammer. Oh, no, that's the hammer. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, um, that's a... So let's just look quickly at the North Carolina Museum of Art. Which has, uh, which is a show uh, curated by Linda Dougherty, which also contains Cities in the Grass, which had its first premiere at the Madison Square Conservancy a year ago. So, can we start this, Grace? And Leo, if there are any comments? I think this mm -hmm. is a minute or two minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a tree. I mean, it's like a, I have never seen that actually in its real self. This is the first time. Uh, the tree has been exhibited, um, and the studio was all always up against the wall. And the black uh, so paragraph. I never we had an opportunity to sort of see it. So that's that uh, uh, we're installing exhibitions by way of Zoom, and this you, exhibition was totally installed. By totally. Yes. Yeah. So I had never seen the exhibition, so it's only online. Uh, yeah. Images are kind of blurry. <laughs> yeah, they are, which is what we were just yeah, talking, it was talking like, uh, about. But I, but I, but I, I get that they actually uh, they were up against it, but they got it done, and it, it looks it, it's rough. Yeah, so mm. there's uh, early, is that a cotton work? It was, Ru I saw Rust work. Yeah, they've been, so they, they gathered works from the different periods. Um, you know, like, uh, interesting enough, I mean, even number eight is in there, which is the mother piece of all works. You know, so uh, it, it's a, uh, wow, this explosion. So the explosion, mm -hmm. um, can we go back to the hammer image? So the explosion, I'm very tied to and proud of because mm -hmm. that had its birth at a, oh, there's the mother piece, mm -hmm. right? Number that, eight. That's yeah. number eight. Russ Boxley, Russ has not made a resurgence. Uh, have zero interest in actually reintroducing materials from the 90s. Uh, where I am right now, I'm still gathering new information, uh, you know, adding to the language, you know, moving forward. Uh, definitely, this has probably been the longest stint in terms of the kinds of materials I've been working with, like wood. It's like, it's like I, I would count the years that I've been working with, with that material, what I've done with it, how we bent it, uh, reconfigured it. You know, uh, I think that it's been a longer period working with that material than, like, say, like rust or, or cotton. Or, or, you know, but uh, uh, and I think maybe for a reason. But I, I 
do that and meditate on the reason why. Can we talk about the explosion, which? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, interesting. We, yeah, we, we, we call it an explosion, but the, the fact is, what is that number, 217 or 215 or something like that? I don't uh, know. The I don't remember is. the number, but yeah. what's, mm -hmm. you know, for our audience, Leo never gives titles to his pieces, never. but they're always working untitled, yeah. but yet mm -hmm. we use the working titles all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, um, uh, someone just clarified that it's 215. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, so what's interesting to me, well, me, one of the things that's interesting is, first of all, that you came up with this idea. I think we planned the show. You came to the gallery last January, and we planned the show for March. Mm -hmm. So that was a very short time for you to make a whole show. Mm -hmm. uh, and you installed this in a day and a half. <laughs> Can you show everyone the pointer? <laughs> you showed, and and so you you were on you were on a, a lift, and the guys on trip, and you installed it, and it had though. You know, we talked about when you said I have zero interest in going back to the '90s, but there are some pieces like mm -hmm. the dog that's mm -hmm. up there. I don't know mm -hmm. if people. See it, yeah, uh, um, that you call the dog mm -hmm. that's been in one, two, three. It's a, it's, a, it's a good luck. I call it a good luck, a charm for the work uh, for one twenty three. So uh, they, they it makes an appearance in all of them. Um, uh, it, it, it's something I like to play around with. Yeah, that I, Having certain structures, yeah, yeah, you know, just reminders of like where where you're from. So it's, it's what, during so. during the show, I don't know if we were open, but Connie Butler from The Hammer came into the gallery mm -hmm. when we were either installing or just the next week, and mm -hmm. she fell in love, and she said, can Leo do this on a larger scale in August? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it was. It was like right around the corner. Right around the corner. Know? I'm exaggerating. It wasn't in August. It was No, no, but it was. I mean, it was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this show really was a show that should not have or have me our show right and i was actually adamant i said i'm not doing the show like at the same time we're doing the installation at, at you know at madison park right you know like uh, uh there's no way that i could could do that and uh, my good friend pam joined at gunpoint it was like you know <laughs> she, she said how can you not do it <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so uh, in the end yeah so i'm glad that she was there and a part of uh this whole pushing forward you know and, so yeah. here's here's the explosion at the hammer Mm -hmm. And it really exploded at the mm -hmm. hammer, and you can see the white, uh, the, the white um, the dog, the dog <laughs> the grew quite dog a bit. Ever been done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the great thing about this is that it's in front of glass windows, and even during the pandemic, though they ex the mm -hmm. exhibition, you can people could still see the piece. And what was it like for you to install it in a different? Do you get the same energy? Do you feel it's a new piece? Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> you know, it's it's not none of this stuff is ever really. So you give me a shape, a room, a space, or whatever, and I will fill it. You know, so it's just really a matter of like you know being present. You know, you have to be present first. You know, and then you sort of like move into uh, the choreography of what needs to happen. But you give me my material, you give me the space, and get out of my way. <laughs> that's all that's necessary. Absolutely. That's uh, one mm -hmm. thing we were talking about before is your relationship also with your assistants mm -hmm. who really understand exactly what you want. And I was really struck by no matter how complex the exhibition was, there was very little talking. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you would you would use that famous pointer. <laughs> and they Listen, would know what that. They would know what that point, mean. They would know what that meant. They, they're, they're, they, they, these are extensions of you. Um, they've been around long enough. Um, there's there's a, a great deal of respect and love, and, and knowing exactly what time it is. You know, so they 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 they, they perform. They get it done. And it's like uh, 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 when it comes to uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, you know trying to sort of realize the next uh, situation. For instance. Um, it's it you 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 you. I think that you you need. It, it's it's not a bad idea to have company on your journey. And can we talk a bit about the outdoor piece you did, Cities in the Grass, uh, which had its foray into the outdoors, and mm -hmm. now that particular piece, after being commissioned by Madison, is in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Um, I, I know you've talked a lot about it, um, <laughs> but 
can talk you, some more. <laughs> you can talk, talk a little more, uh, maybe about the relationship to the landscape and the architecture. Well, I mean, you're framed by the city. I mean, you see the Empire State Building there. Uh, the very idea that you're given this opportunity to, 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 to work in the greatest, most magnificent city in the world uh, and at the very center of it. You know, so you're framed by this. And um, it just made sense for me to sort of um, uh, attempt to, to meld uh, the idea of a stupa with the Empire State Building. It started there. Uh, from there, it started to blend into and become <laughs> the city in the grass. You know? I mean, the colors absolutely came from my, my uh, uh, visits to China, the four years back and forth that I was in I have with uh, China. A fantastic experience. <coughs> But I think that, like, um, you know, all in all, been amped up. Thank you. I've been amped up because of the the, uh, the intensity of the color. I mean, mm. can people see in this studio? Let me see if I can move my screen a little. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to show them the piece in the corner mm -hmm. or um, one of these pieces. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I listen, color is, I mean, you can see it right there. And, uh, uh, color is live in effect. So no way that um, that, that is not. Language. So, so uh, I'm saying, uh, I'm, I said I'm not necessarily forgetting right anything, but I'm definitely adding to the overall uh, uh, language to the into the journey. Uh, so those, these are the most important points. That the, the journey takes the language that you used before and weaves it in a new way. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, can we look at how Cities in the Grass looks in North Carolina? Since most of us are not going to be able to get on a plane <laughs> oh, to experience it. I haven't seen it in North Carolina, and I'm, you know, I'm noticing how high the grass has grown around it, and it's it's, it's something else. The whole other, you know, uh, this is it when it first was first installed when the grass was not green. But when it came to like uh, you know you know allowing the sort of grass to grow up around the piece, I mean, really became a city of grass, and that was an aspect that I thought. And at uh, uh, her crew were like shaving, <laughs> cutting into, you know, trimming it, you know. And I thought that was you know that's that was key to what's going to happen when you really allow that grass to grow the piece, you know. North Carolina became that. That very thing. So change, entropy, mm. uh, mm. different all, things are all of these things are acceptable. Absolutely. I mean, that's, listen, we are not from nature. We are, you know, in fact, you know, like a, a nature of nature. We are it. You know, we are not separate from it. Mm -hmm. So as we move forward, I think that like a, 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 a we, we, we design, oh, we, we become other. You know, uh, whether or not we come back in the same form in some other on some other plane, I have no idea. I don't know anything about that. But I can tell you that we want to become us again, you know. But I believe that actually we become an additive to a larger, bigger force. It's a cosmic idea of things. It's bigger. So Looking here in the studio, and I don't know if you are able to get up or, or look around, can, um, I, I think we've seen all the photos, Grace, thank you, um, is this is all the work you made, mm -hmm. or, or not, not behind, it's an iteration of a work mm -hmm. that you've been working on for a long time. So this piece is new. Mm -hmm. um, this, new. Is, this is brand new. Two hours old. It's in fact. <laughs> <laughs> so new that when I called you on Saturday and I said, "Can I pop over as a pre-visit?" and you said, "I have four pieces that are not going to be finished until you arrive." <laughs> so, um, do you like the pressure, or is it just that there's no beginning, middle, and end when you're working? That's more, more like that's more. Like it. There's no beginning, middle, or end. You said it perfectly. So, you could come over then you would have just seen the finish of something. Uh, you know, but I, I thought it would be, it's probably better for uh, an audience anyway to sort of like bring them in on something that's actually, and that you've actually now digested at the same time. But, but um, So this is all, you'd say, the COVID work. 
right? It's all going on pretty much alone in the studio mm. because the team was mm. doing uh, individual, they were, they were making elements, That's time, correct. right? Yeah. They couldn't, you couldn't work with them mm -hmm. at the studio. So they worked on their elements mm. and you worked here alone, mm. um, having your own mental space. Mm. And the piece, The Long Wave, can mm. we see the, can you look at the, the Long Wave on the wall? That, is it possible? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's a, it's a monster, you know, um, it's a monster and mm -hmm. it's to me both light and dark. Mm -hmm. It feels You're being very kind. <laughs> well, I feel it's eros and I feel it's death. And I never felt mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. of course, even though you use a painted black wood, so everyone mm -hmm. would think I mean, could you get closer and get detailed uh, and sort of like a, from both sides? So, you know, some of those brown yeah. forms we'll we've seen, it. you know, mm -hmm. we've seen in earlier works. Mm -hmm. uh, the wave forms, certainly you've done a number of works with waves, mm -hmm. uh, usually of smaller scale. Is this the largest one or is... It's in there. I mean, uh, uh, Pam and Ella have, have two of the large ones. Uh, this is in that very same camp. And it has a central, can you show us the central part, Grace, the uh, yeah. kind of if you go head on where you see that triangle, mm -hmm. you know, it's like everything meets there. It's more of a sexy piece, but it's also, I mm -hmm. think, has a lot of melancholy mm -hmm. and darkness in it. And so I wondered if that came from isolation. I mean, I know artists can never identify this is why, but did you have a different mental state working on it than usual? I mean, I wasn't depressed or anything. I mean, it was I was I was fully myself. But I think that we're we're in tenants, right? We're receivers of information. So even without having to sort of plug directly into or mm -hmm. be saying mm -hmm. or saying hey, this is what the work is going to be about. Mm -hmm. I never think that way. Right. So I'm plugged. In. It's mm -hmm. like a, there's no way that I was not in, mm -hmm. you know like a information as an antenna as an right. antenna. Right. You know? Right. Um, and, but you still, you said you found it a great period to work. Yeah. I, 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 did I say that it wasn't? <laughs> I no, no. I mean, you said, that. you said it was, I'm not sure if we were on, if we were live then or not, uh -huh. but that you had a lot of me time, a lot of time. Yes, to, a lot of me time. That's, that's good, right? That's great. I loved it. I mean, <laughs> no, no. And, and, and like I, you know, like, you know, with the space next door, I will carve out a space where I can have more of me. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, listen, I grew up uh, in this uh, very tight family of five boys in one small room, and I had to make art in that small space with all my brothers. I need to have people jumping over me. I need to have the TV on. I need the noise going. All those things are additives to how I make them. Uh, so having my helpers here, it's not a negative. It's just that I also realized that, like, you know, having the you need the yin and yang. You need the both. You need both. You know, uh, 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 so not one is over the other. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, but absolutely, I think that like you know, like I've been for 13 years, you know, like with these other bodies and not having the other. Does that right. make sense? I didn't have the other. So I only had one side of it, uh, which is like them le literally leaping over me. And order the space is tight there's a lot of things going on seven crying babies having it all at the same time so you have to attend to each one you know and so that as you're sort of uh, trying attempting to do that uh you have these bodies that you get you have to chore uh, choreograph you know and um uh, no negatives there it's just you know now it's like we're gonna have <laughs> anyway, so um, maybe you can mm. show people, or Grace, you can show the top. So this is really in transition. What right? you talking about? Th this this, this is behind me. This yeah. Thing? This is early, early, early stages. This is a real gift for the audience. <laughs> we don't have to share. But well, I don't know. They, they're they're seeing. I'm seeing just uh, something. Which, and I think that yeah. I mean, I think that like uh, I'm probably going back. In some ways to my roots which came i mean started off as a painter and i think that like if we're talking about our next fish gallery it will probably be you know very painterly 
and like uh and colors are absolutely in effect yes and the compositions i never that those you know like how i realize compositions people may not necessarily be aware of it but like if you look at my my sculpture uh, you look at very early works from like the 70s mm -hmm. you know the paintings you know all those you know delineations all those you know like a signature marks and things it's still apparent actually in these uh, wall works these uh you know these Uh, his wall works are, you know, they are similar to paintings. You know, they have a composition of paintings. They're more in tune with doing. You using the wall, you know, you're and using that's the a wall. Simple, that's a simple uh, step to like understanding that, like, okay, yeah, that's that my beginnings, mm -hmm. but but there are other things going on. I mean, there's a line, there's a stroke. I'm literally like actually drawing. You know, if you think I'm sculpting, I'm actually drawing. That's an inconsistency the line. I can see and definitely the, the color. So this is, a, this is great for the audience starting. Mm. You've often said, well, I make chaos legible. Mm. And what's interesting about seeing this piece where it's so clear what the forms are is that later the clarity of those forms gets obscured by the material. Mm. So there's a kind of dance between what's underneath and what we see on, on the top. Well, anybody that's listening to this this uh, this uh, Zoom thing, you know, that we have to have some secrets. <laughs> so some we just secrets. gave away everything. I hope like we got three people listening. Hopefully, <laughs> no, actually, you have eighty-five. You have eighty-five people listening. Um, so to show people some other works in the studio, I don't know if you can get the shield. I mean, that's that's another. That's another work which has a number, but we call mm -hmm. it Shield. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you were talking about using different materials. You sometimes use form over and again. So that's mm -hmm. actually, you sent me an iteration of that, well, maybe six months ago mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the show in Paris, which mm -hmm. was scheduled for May of this year, but had to be postponed, or will, it was postponed. And now you have, a third one that you're working on. So, what is it that makes you go back? There are more up there. <laughs> they're covered. They're covered. <laughs> so, yeah, they're beginnings of, of other. Yeah, it, it, it's not like a, we have enough space to sort of show uh, everything that I'm thinking about working on. But, yeah, there are starts and tops. And, you know, like I said, seven crying babies. So, there's like, uh, there are enough things that you're rotating. You know, and if you're talking about revisiting certain shapes or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, like I said, I'm just, you know, I, I continue, as I continue to add to the language, I'm not forgetting the things that I've uh, done just before. So, uh, uh, though I'm not visiting cotton, I'm not revisiting uh, 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 rust, uh, uh, some of these, uh, these uh, older materials, like mm -hmm. from the time, I think that got done. Uh, but the other things that actually are more kind of, to me to be added is, uh, to uh, 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 possibilities and, and understanding that as a more uh, as a mature adult, and you sort of like say, okay, you know, like uh, you know, you we you know, we're literally adding words to a larger language. Can we talk about done? Mm -hmm. Because I remember in one of our first meetings or studio visits, you said, "I'm going to tell you something. If you send me back the work, it's not going to look like that. <laughs> if you ask for it back." So anything that comes back here, it's fair game for me to remake. That's correct. Um, how do you know when it's done, or is a work ever I done? Honestly, I don't think anything is really ever done. I mean, we have like a tree that was sitting here for like ten years in a corner, and it kept, you know, adding. I kept adding on to it. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think that it that, that it benefited from the fact that it was hanging around for that long. But uh, uh, the, like when you take things out of here, it's done. I, I can't I can't touch it anymore. Uh, though there have been stories of museums, they say that I come in and I touch things in the museum, but I don't touch things in the museum. But you know, but that's a myth. Right. <laughs> I don't go in like that's a, that's a great myth. shape things right there, but it's like uh, no, they, those are off limit. But if they're in this uh, maybe in the gallery, 
you know, I might, you know, I, if allowed, you know. Like well, you a, did a, ask me to send the work back. And yeah. You said, I, 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 I want to keep doing something. Yeah. I want to do something else to this. Yes, yes, yes. Which well, is that, fair yeah. game. Yes. So I think it's only, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it just makes sense that, you know, if we, if we as, as, as living beings uh, can continue to sort of add on to our, our, our history, you know, by gathering information, why can't these, these things are alive too, you know. Uh, and we'll probably be here much, much longer than us. So I think that they should be, you should continue to sort of add on and they should, you should have a sort of, they should have a large yes to their, to their, to their life. life. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So in terms of new forms, I was really surprised to see this one, the- We got a, a wave totem. A wave totem. A wave totem. So that's a new, that's yes, a new, yes, that's yes. A new. And you told me it's very new. Yes, yes. <laughs> We, we, we can count the hours, <laughs> um, literally. So, uh, I mean, get to the side of it. The yeah, side the, side of it. Is the, great, mm. the side is a great view. So it's very undulating, very mm. beautiful, but it's also kind of spiky. Mm. So these kind of contradictions are, do you, is that an intuitive response? Or when you, how, how, did you, how did you turn that on its side? Because that's a way, right? For me, it seems very. I can see like you're, simple, puzzled, you're puzzled in the question. Oh, no, well, no, no, ask that. I, I do understand that there's a, there's an algebra or geometry to these things. So you know, having that understanding, then yeah, sure. I mean, gra gravity says that it needs to be that. So you know, like if I were to go with a horizontal, it's like uh, okay, you know, you add one thing to the other. And when I say algebra, it's ge geometry, so like, it makes sense. This one actually adds up, <laughs> you know? Did you start yeah. that on the floor or did you start that on the wall? Both, because you got parts that have to be created and then mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. you know, it's, these things all have to come together. So th this is, the way things are usually created here is that, yeah, they're, they're done in, in sections and parts and bits and pieces. I mean, they're, they're bits and pieces of old things that are lying around. So, uh, so there, 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 there are so many different directions, so many ways to sort of um, uh, to finalize uh, a, a work um, because it's, it's, there, there, there are so many working ends to it. You know what I mean? There, 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 and they all have a- Where's just right? No, I mean, the, the idea, you don't destroy energy, it's just reconfigured, right? So understand that that's what the work is, is reconfiguring itself continuously, you know, but it's never enough. Yeah. I mean, only because you guys record things and you see you catalog them and then you say that's finished. You know, that's not my way of dealing with these things. So if you, if you had, if you photograph something, you end up getting it back, to, you know, you know the end result of it is I'm not going to respect fact that you recorded it, you know, and that, that no, it's still alive. It needs to sort of, you know, there's there are other things that can happen. To it. Um, so one thing um, I'm sure people are interested to, and I'll look at some questions in a minute, is what's coming next for you? What projects and what mm -hmm. are you, um, what's coming next? Well, the power plant, we're talking that's in Canada. They're doing a whole lot better than us in terms of handling the virus. So they're, they're, they're looking at January to do uh, their uh, excavation, which for me is like right around the corner. Uh, Wadsworth is talking about their, their team. Uh, and that Wadsworth will be an outdoor piece? Uh, it's probably outdoor and then a the, then the hanging insulation indoors. So two works, two monsters uh, of, of, you know, Gigantic things that will be realized one outdoors, probably in the other indoors. So um, it's just a matter of like you know, me, you know, there are a lot of things going on in the studio, and there are things that you're responsible, uh, you or become. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just trying to sort of you know, as always, navigate uh, the two things and be fair in terms of like you know. So. Well, one thing my show I forgot to mention is the Eskenazi show, which mm -hmm. is um, yeah. works on paper with sculpture. Yeah, um, they're not exactly, but Grace, maybe we could see some of the works on paper that mm -hmm. Leah's been working on because I think a lot of people might not know you have a big interest in prints. Yeah, I've been working with paste print, 
and some also working with uh, or have worked with in the past with uh, in San Francisco. Uh, not Crown Point. Um, uh, Walton? Crown Point. Of Crown Point? Crown Point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Crown Point, well, Crown, between Crown Point and uh, uh, Ace Prince. I've uh, been doing a longer stand, obviously, with Ace Prince for some years now. Uh, and uh, with my good friends, uh, you know, group, uh, Ligon and, uh, and the Kimmy Martin. She, and the same mm -hmm. way your clan or the other mm -hmm. assistants, mm -hmm. I feel you have that relationship Absolutely. with Ruth. Like, Absolutely. you know, she knows yeah. language you want to use. Yeah. She we, knows we call the short, short name. The short name. <laughs> I could, yeah. I could tell as soon as I met her that mm -hmm. you were very, you, the two of you were very close participants. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Which was great to see. Yeah. So um, the, that show, uh, Prince, started at the University of um, Massachusetts at Amherst, mm -hmm. like right. a year ago, a year ago, like yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Are we in mm -hmm. September? Yes. Mm -hmm. A year ago, right now. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. the Eskenazi Museum. And uh, also a large part of that collection is drawn from the Schnitzer collection, correct? That's correct. I mean, a so, large part of that exhibition. You know, Jordan, yeah, he's been collecting a lot. So it, that show, which started out as a print show, mm -hmm. uh, became like, you know, then all became the works that he was collecting. So he started adding those into uh, mm -hmm. the exhibition. Now it's not different show. It's actually right. a show of prints plus uh, major works. Uh, and he continues to sort of accumulate even more things. He has these purchased like gigantic explosion. So I think that like uh, interest to see that kind of uh, focus and ambition. Uh, uh, I mean, you're, you're, we, I mean, one thing that's really, I think, um, and you were also in the show I'm not sure if it was halted because of the pandemic, but the Joiner was the Frida show of Generations. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I know Pam Joiner has also been a big supporter. Absolutely. Um, and was one My of the and, and was one of the midwives who brought us together. Um, so uh, uh, and I think that's also you know a great gift to artists and the galleries to have you know Absolutely. people who who don't just support an artist in one way, but feel they're tied to the artist's whole practice mm -hmm. and, you know, whole um, experience of work. Absolutely. Yeah, but The Generations was a beautiful show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna just look and see a couple of questions. Uh, so are some of these questions aren't questions. Um, uh, okay, the one here is a real question. Um, so uh, I know your early work has a substructure of the grid. Uh, we talked a lot about the importance of that. This is from an artist. Um, can you talk about the grid and its influ influence in your recent work, its formal quality, and is it something you think about in every work you make? Mm. Like, I'm a follower of minimalist movement and that's where the grid sort of comes from but mm -hmm. in fact it's it's a it's a it's a tool for being able to you know when i was just me lifting things it's like you know i can lift something that's two two by two you can combine all those mm -hmm. works these parts together uh, to create like you know a grid is the best way to sort of realize the same uh, And you feel there. you're still using the grid? Yeah, it's in there. I don't think it's ever not there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, that has been a, it's been a pretty much amazing. But it's an intuitive approach. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah Rather than, rather mm -hmm. than something more uh, clearly thought of. No, 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 I have to, I have to break these things down. So it's really the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. So, oh, here's a question. I'm sorry, someone sent a very long uh, description, but there is a question in it. Um, so the question is, do you ever have thoughts about changes in the world while you work? Is the environment, the natural world, which is moving because of it in spite of, and the political climate today part of your consciousness? Or are you in some other space where nothing is really nameable? Oh, man, I don't think we create in a vacuum. That's for one. 
so, but, but I am an antenna, as you know, as I stated earlier. So I am receiving information. Um, uh, this, these things are coming in. This energy, all these, uh, all this information coming into the walls. Even if I'm not necessarily physically informed uh, by these things, I'm actually in tune with the vibrations of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you don't necessarily take in things with your eyes, your pores. All these things are acting out, you know, in order for you to sort of like collect information and then to give back. Super important for you to be, you know, uh, uh, alive, aware. Uh, so that you can gather information. Receiver uh, information is super important. Yeah. Um, but there's no direct political. Uh, not it's, it's not necessary. It's not. not it, you get. It's come, it, listen, we're talking about what's going on in these pieces. That all that what's going on outside is absolutely in the work. Absolutely, it's not. It's not necessary. Listen, when I was at Glory Island back in '95, mm -hmm. you know, Glory Island is in Senegal, which is where my folks, my people, you know, were, you know, mm -hmm. uh, held, you know, in dungeons before they were put on the boat and then shipped here. All right, so here, boom, I get, I get to go to Glory Island in '93. Uh, you sit in those catacombs, get that experience, come back to the studio. What, what do you think I'm going to do with that? experience you know i didn't have to say i'm going to make work right. about that experience at that experience it's not necessary for you to sort of like now you know uh be redundant you know it's literal, just gonna I, I, yes i am i am i am i am i'm not a not a poet not a musician you know uh not a writer but i am an artist artist so if i take in that information it, it's coming out what, what am I supposed to do with that information? <laughs> and you know? do you ever find some information too hard to process? No. <laughs> no, you're you're oh, you're you're an open app, a sponge. Yeah. So that's a great to go into the next question, mm. which is: Could Leo uh, talk about the influence of other cultures? The person is referencing that they recently learned um, how much time you had spent in China and what that had, uh, uh, how that had affected you. And so they wanted to know if you could talk about the influence of, of other cultures. Well, universe. listen, that, that, that that's a great question because my four years in China, uh, and I was in mainland China, not the safe places like Hong Kong or Shanghai. We're talking with the real real folks. No, you, you know? I mean, you, you told me that there was, that every time you went out, you had a whole train of people. Yes. Following <laughs> and they hadn't really. It, 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 was, it was, you know, it, 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 I can be nostalgic about that situation. It was a beautiful experience, uh, but it was, and it was full on. Now, it wasn't necessary to be able to speak uh, Chinese. Mandarin, you know, it was not necessary. Uh, though I was working in a foundry with folks who we, we were communicating, but we didn't necessarily need language in order to sort of get it done. Uh, what they were learning from me and what I was learning from them, uh, it was a trade-off between, uh, 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 between artists and uh, this uh, level of like-mindedness. Uh, and I feel that it's, if, I, if I'm talking about energy, these things that are in the air, this is exactly what I'm saying. Language, uh, all the things that you sort of try to sort of like, and you know, a bracket, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the uh, 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 like a push forward. All these things are are, are, are kind of naturally they're there. It's not necessary for you to sort of bracket them with all these other uh, uh, things that 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 tend to inhibit a uh, 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 the uh, uh, possibility to grow. Uh, so here I am in China, uh, working with these folks, and we're not speaking the same language, but I'm working in their foundry, and uh, they're introducing to how they work their craft. At the same time, I'm smashing things, and they're kind of like, well, is that garbage then if you're smashing it? Because that's what we consider, right. you know, garbage. If you smash these things, then it's like, it's trash. So you would make the, the porcelain or, or and, and, and Make then... something precious, then break it. That's total, total emphasis, total opposite of what they're doing. Uh, but they got it in the end. And I'm almost sure they're making Smash works now, you know, you know, like, uh, they've appropriated whatever I, I get given them, and I'm doing the very same. I've appropriated whatever they've given me. So uh, how these things become additives, super important that that you do that you, you touch uh, on these these uh, other uh, sides of the world, these other uh, uh, possibilities. 
and um, how they enhance and how they add on to uh, become additives to your uh, larger language. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know. Um, and you uh, also went to Peru. Right? Uh, I was in went to Machu Picchu and uh, and they they uh, uh, some years before. So there have been this continued sort of like uh, uh, collect collecting of uh, information. And how that information feeds its way into the work, like I said, I don't necessarily have to call on it. You digested it, it is now you. It has now become you. So China is me now. <laughs> so it's like uh, parts of Peru. Um, you know, like uh, Egypt was the next planned trip, which was supposed to happen this month. Are we in September? But well, we had to postpone that. But I think that the uh, trick to all this is that uh, um, you allow yourself to be a receiver of information. You know? That's great. Um, so uh, Joanne Northup from the Nevada Museum, who exhibited your work recently, uh, asked if you could discuss the what the the mission at the San Francisco airport. Uh, yeah. Well, the one twenty threes had their beginnings from uh, uh, all these bits and pieces from remnants from uh, old works. Uh, and my move from, uh, you know, from my studio in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, to uh, San Antonio, Texas, where I had another studio, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, I'm sad. I was spending more time there, so I was shipping all this material and found that I had tons of material, you know, just because I'm not letting anything go. So all these, all this material became like uh, words in the vocabulary, you know. Uh, that's so what, what, what one twenty three is. So in the, so in the end, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, having all, all your, your, you know, words. You know, uh, from your previous, uh, uh, you know, or, or additives uh, from your uh, your language. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, they continue to last first, and that the piece in San Francisco is absolutely that. It's just another iteration of a one twenty three. Um, uh, so when you saw the space in, at, of the terminal, you mm -hmm. saw did they did the curator say, "I really would like a one two three." I think I, I saw the space. And I saw the space when it wasn't really a space. It was just framed. <laughs> they took me in and it was an airport. And I could see the plane flying around outside. And it's like, you know, and I, they were like literally parking in the space that I was in. So it was like, okay, this is where they said, this is where we're going to have this space. And I'm like, well, it's where you park the airplane. <laughs> but it's like, uh, so, and so in the end, it was like, you have to imagine what could work there. The 123s are, 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 are um, in general, they 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 um, they take on space. So just for people um, mm -hmm. to understand, Grace is filming mm -hmm. the 123 or portions of a 123. Yeah, and up there, honey, up Grace behind you. The um, the one in the corner. Yeah, all those are parts and that become. It, it really is a storehouse. All all bits and pieces. And so 123, uh, you know, like uh, is it, exactly that. It is just. Hieroglyphics, you know, of my Hieroglyphics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you answered this, but someone asked, to what, "What is the work behind you?" Mm -hmm. Yep, to be to be realized very soon. <laughs> Our next ex New York exhibition. Right. Mm -hmm. um, someone else. Well, this is a question. What informs your material selection when you make the work? You have seven. I, I call them seven crying babies. So you have seven works usually rotating, you know, uh, at the same time, simultaneously. So they're feeding off of one another. So the, in, in effect, they, they, they enhance and they help each other in order to sort of reach, you know, uh, uh, their, their, their life. You know? So I think that as I'm sort of moving forward, it, it's, it, it, the works are assisting because they're assisting each other. So Leah, what do you do for downtime? <laughs> I know the answer. Yeah, so that's not but, uh, right. yeah, you know, listen, I get my four hours. I get my four hours of sleep, and then it's on. So uh, um, that is because I'm noticing that ten, like I fall out at ten thirty now, and they're up by two thirty. So ten thirty p.m. up by two thirty. That's still four hours. Yeah, but I'm just saying that the, 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 the four hours absolute. But we're now because of the pandemic, I think things have shifted. So it's the the, the, the things that you're responsible during the daytime. Uh huh. You know what I mean? It's that shifted now. It's, I've had this stream of thought, you know, like nonstop, like working for like almost six months now. It's six months, right? That's March, right? So it's been this kind of continued continuation of like, you know, just. So now, of course, your sleeping patterns are changing. 
So it's like, yeah. So now, you know, instead of, you know, falling out at like uh, four in the morning and, and up by 7.30, you know, it's now it's 10.30, you know, and like, uh, so. <laughs> Um, one question, one, one question is, how do you source your materials? Do you want to answer that? Some, yeah, some, know, some source, artists source, are very secretive about source how materials. They, what does that mean exactly when you say source materials? Um, source materials. How do I where, add, where do you you know, get things? Where do you get things? Like, things are created in the studio. Things are, like material. I think that that's, that's not a, that's a really useful nothing to hold back but they, people think that I work with found objects but no these are not found objects these things are actually created fabricated in studio so I need to sort of go through the um you know the, the you know the mm -hmm. the lifespan of material so, so birth, after birth life death and regeneration those things are you know continue additives to a process and the materials need to go through that so you become nature so you don't separate yourself from nature you take the materials through that very same process that we all have so it starts off brand new for into next in iterations of the material. And then it disappears. Oh, well, become something else. Like us. Oh, yes. <laughs> or like nature. Um, so Leo, you talked uh, at the beginning of our talk, you said, give me a space, give me some time, I'll attack it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, in a positive way. Mm. What would be your art dream of a space that you'd like to work in and transform? I've had the opportunity to work, like say like in Florence, uh, 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 which is fantastic. And I'm sorry, in a, a Siena, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, anything around the- uh, Like a know, renaissance the, the space. Renaissance space is always like, wow, you know, because, you know, the original Leonardo, <laughs> And it's beginning there, you know, so it's like, wow, it's like, a, it's just, just the, the cradle, one of the cradles of civilization. And um, that would just, I mean, that's just one. I mean, actually anything in China, you know, like uh, from the Great Wall to, I mean, having the, you know, just to, to be able to experience uh, that, digest it. But what if you were given a permission to sort of like, you know, do something there? What could that be? You know, it's, it, it's, it's a Bible moment. Mind blowing, but I would love to. You know, you know. I mean, even like the NASA lines when I was looking at them from the plane, you know, like, uh, and then you're on the ground looking at where you can't know, you know, like, uh, you know, like what's happening from uh, from the from ground level, but from up above, you can see that these things are gigantic drawings. So the idea that you know you can do this in the sand, you know, carve into it, into the, and then it, and, it, and it holds that that form. Can you imagine like being able to sort of like realize something like that now? I mean, I think with the land, like Smithson's land, land art, you, know, you, can, you can see that, you know, where he's taking that on, but I would love to do something like that. So, so you would love to, art dream would mm -hmm. be less a physical space, but as to you know, embrace it's the open. landscape. It could, it, it, could, it could be landscape or it could, you know, I, I mean, when I say landscape, that's only been introduced because of what I did with Madison Park. So it's like, uh, uh, um, and even then it's like, okay, what would you do next if you're going to do something outside? And I know that you allow the public to finish the work. You know? So I think with the, with he said, you know, City in the Grass, it's like the public actually allowed to sort of like to, 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 to crawl on it, to, to, to walk on it, to climb it. Um, uh, the piece now becomes something else. So the, the, the viewers actually are now, they're, 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 they're become, they become artists. They, they're, they, they, they add on to the work and they complete the work. And I think that I would like to, you know, realize, you know, bring that into a full-on philosophy and the next, you know, like a, a outdoor world. So, um, I think we've come to the end of our questions, um, and I would like to close on what you said. You said it's birth, it's regeneration. Birth, life, death, death regeneration. Full on cycle. Full on cycle. Mm -hmm. um, I, cycle, I think, is a great. It's a. It's a great. It's a great idea for all of us to meditate on, especially now, because I think all of us feel a bit as if we don't know the beginning, the middle, or the end. We don't know if we're at the end of something. We don't know if we're at the beginning of something. Very true. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's a quite confusing time in mm -hmm. all ways for all of us and a time that has a lot of fear. So it's been great to be in this space of positivity. I want to thank Leonardo. I want to thank Grace Kong from our gallery who set this up. I want to thank all of our listeners um, who tuned in and shared their um, summer afternoon with us. Um, so thank you from Gallery Lalonde for joining us. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and other social media platforms. And you can look for work of Leonardo's on our website. And Leonardo, thank you. You know, thank you. It's, thank you guys for it's, joining. It's, a such, it's such a wonderful way to work together. Okay? So thank you.